Hey everyone, in this chem help video we're going to look at the hydrolysis of salts. Now this is a tricky topic in year 12 where we're looking at um, how does a solution's pH change depending on the salt that's dissolved in it. So let's get into it. Alright, so neutralisation. We know about neutralisation. Way back in year 9 we looked at this basic equation. Acid plus a base is a salt plus water. So neutralisation, sometimes incorrectly called cancellation of the acid or the base. But neutralization is a chemical reaction where we're actually forming water from a hydronium ion, in the case of the bronsted layer theory, and hydroxide. So does neutralization mean that the resulting solution will have a neutral pH? And this is really important when we come to look at titrations because a titration is a neutralization reaction. We're adding an acid to a base. We're picking an endpoint with an indicator when the correct stoichiometric ratio of acid is added to base to completely neutralize both watch the pH B. Now, theoretically, you say, well, of course, I've neutralized the acid with the base, it's going to be pH 7. But when we do it, we find that sometimes the pH is acidic, sometimes the pH is neutral, sometimes the pH is basic. So why is that? Right. So we need to go through a process to determine what's going to be the case for that particular solution. So here are some guidelines for the technique I'm going to show you today. So first of all, is that we're going to look at the salt that we produce. And then we've got to think about where did the ions that are in the salt come from? Or what would they turn into if we reverted them back to their original acid and base forms? So the first one is we need to write hydrolysis equations, which essentially is a reaction with water to demonstrate whether something is going to be acid or base. Strong acids, of course, ionize completely in solution, so they'll never reform. Strong bases will either dissociate in the case of hydroxides or in the case of oxides dissociate then ionize and they're not going to reform either. Weak acids of course will reform because they form an equilibrium when they're with water and weak bases will reform as well. So those ones will interfere, we call it interference, with water and will affect the pH of the resulting solution. So that's the basic guidelines. And the thing we've also got to be very conscious of is watch out for amphoteric substances. So those that are acting as an acid or a base, and I'll give you an example of those when we get to it. Okay, so let's get into the first one. Our salt. The salt we're going to deal with is potassium nitrate. So an acid has been added to a base, and the resulting salt is potassium nitrate. Now how we got there depends on the substances, but it could be potassium hydroxide and nitric acid. So here's the procedure we go through. First of all, we list the ions that we've got, so nitrate and potassium. And we're going to react both of those with water, and we'll see what happens. Water is the thing we're going to look at because that's the other component of the solution. So what we do is we look at each of these and see, is there going to be an equilibrium or a reaction happening? So first of all, nitrate. Will nitrate act as a base and accept the proton from water? Well, no, it won't, because to do so, it would have to form nitric acid, which is a strong acid, so it won't reform. Will a potassium react with the water at all? Will it accept or donate a proton? No, it won't, because it won't be able to reform potassium hydroxide, which is a strong base. Because we can't reform a strong acid, we can't reform a strong base. Neither of those ions, the nitrate or the potassium, have any interfering quality, we call it affinity sometimes, for water. So neither ion interferes with water, therefore the solution that we produce was going to be neutral. Okay, so let's look at another salt, ammonium chloride. So if we have ammonium chloride salt, now we could make this salt just by getting some ammonium chloride solid and dissolving in water, or it could be the product of a neutralization. It's going to be neutral, basic, or acidic. So we list our ions. So say we've dissolved this salt into water, and we expect the salt water to be neutral. So chloride is, potassium nitrate is. What happens with this one? Okay, so we're going to react both ions with water in a hydrolysis equation. Remember that word, hydrolysis, reaction with water. Now, ammonium ammonium will donate a proton to the water and act as a weak acid. Okay, so the ammonium acts as a weak acid, forming hydronium ions and ammonia. Okay, the chloride, the chloride will not accept the hydrogen back to form the strong acid. So one of the ions interfered with water, the other one didn't. In this case, ammonium interferes with water, therefore the solution produced will be acidic because you have produced hydronium ions from the salt. So when you take the pH, it's less than 7. So let's look at another example, a potassium um, acetate or potassium methanoate. List both ions. 
react both with water. What happens? Well, the ethanoate ion reacts with water to accept back its proton, so it acts as a base. So the weak acid, ethanoic acid, will reform. And you can see here we've got a hydroxide ion being produced. That means that that solution, that anion, will make the solution basic. The potassium ion will not react with water, will not reform the um, potassium hydroxide, so therefore we have um, no interference there whatsoever. So only the ethanoate ion interferes with water, therefore the solution produced is going to be basic. All right, so we have a situation that we have a basic solution this time. What about if you have ammonium phosphate? So it's a different salt as well. All right, so let's look at that one. So again, from a solid or from the result of a titration of some sort. So ammonium and phosphate, we always list our ions. We react both of those ions with water and we see what happens. Okay, so the ammonium will donate a proton to the water and act as a weak acid, therefore making hydronium ions there. What about the phosphate? What will that do? Well, the phosphate can accept the proton, act as a weak base, producing hydroxide ions in solution. So the first equation produces hydronium, the second produces hydroxide. So they're both producing species that would interfere. Both interfere with water, therefore the solution produced is neutral. Now, in reality, would it be neutral? Well, that actually depends a lot on the acidity, the Ka constant or the Kb constant. Now, technically, if one is bigger than the other, it will be affected more by the bigger one than the little lower one, so therefore it'll be skewed one way or the other. Now, these two um, are not necessarily identical, but unless you're given the K value, you can't really predict that. Um, if it was ammonium uh, acetate or ethanoate, then they both have the same K. Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, Kb is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. They both interfere to the exact same degree, therefore it's going to be neutral. This one might be a little bit different but you get the gist of how it works. Okay, what about this one? This is a tricky one. This is an amphoteric substance. So we've got sodium and we've got hydrogen phosphate. So whenever you see an iron with a hydrogen in it, you think, hmm, this might be amphoteric. What are we gonna do about that? And why amphiprotic is another word we use. So again, we use the same format, react both with water and see what happens. Now the sodium will not form sodium hydroxide. We cannot reform that. But this one, what's this gonna do? Is it gonna accept the proton or is it not? Or is it going to give a proton? What are we going to do? So what we need to do here is we actually need to look at the Ka and the Kb. So you see the K, Ka, so if it was to act as an acid, is 3.6 times 10 to the minus 13. If it's to act as a base, it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 7. So the base number is bigger. So that's the one it's most likely to do. So it's most likely to act as a base, not as an acid. Therefore, it's going to act as a base and um, it's going to give its proton. All right, accept the proton and it's going to form the dihydrogen phosphate ion and therefore it's going to be basic as a solution. All right, so only the hydrogen phosphate interferes with water, therefore the solution produced is going to be basic. So that's a basic solution and you need to look at the Ka and the Kb for that. So hopefully that short video has shown you how we deal with these salts. Hopefully you'll be able to practice those in class a little bit more, but hopefully you can walk away being a bit more confident looking at your hydrolysis of salts. Okay, see you next time.